Look upon me. Count what I show. Then measure my base, and I will tell you why I am where I am. Digest the logic carefully. It works either way. We can also work from its grid latitude. Multiply by the nine terraces and find its base area. It's how they hid actual measurements. No real trick to it. Do not be intimidated by their genius. These ancient masters were smart, damn smart. But they were only human. And anything a human can encode, another human can decode. Exercise patience. Great teachers are speaking to us from this matrix. But we've been to the moon, so don't underestimate the student over here on our side of time. We too can learn new languages. While the ancients certainly handled their math differently than we do, their use of our modern 12-inch foot can be found everywhere at Tikal, and even our 5,280-foot mile. And one of the best classrooms in which to study it is right here at Tikal, which I suspect was the Matrix University itself. Temple 2, shown here, was its smallest pyramid, only 142 feet high. Remember the recent television commercial for athletic footwear, wherein they showed a pair of kids running up the staircase of a Mayan pyramid? This was the pyramid. And it only has 49 steps. They should try it in Temple 4 sometime. That'll make a wreck out of any athlete. 49 steps to the top of the pyramid proper here at Temple 2, the so-called Temple of the Masks. Then notice that from there up to the doorway of the Temple proper are 10 additional steps. That's 59 in all, divided into two distinctly separate staircases. When 59 is divided by 2, the result is 29 and a half. Notice that the base of the staircase at ground level is 29 and one half feet wide. That's feet. Of course, this too is converted from Mahler's metric determination. The 12 inch foot explained on the facade of Temple 2. Temple 2 faces a larger pyramid across a plaza, Temple 1, the Temple of the Giant Jaguar, colorful names. Temple 2, Temple 3, and Temple 4, which is just off the map to the west, all face east toward the sunrise. Sunrise worship, don't you know? But what about Temple 1? Why does it face west? Sunset worship? It's easy to see how the experts in primitive religions might draw such simplistic conclusions, but that's not at all why Temple One faces west. They miss this one by a country mile. When Mallor measured the temple atop pyramid number one, he found it to have a depth of, and I quote, exactly 759 centimeters. Exactly, eh? Well, it's hard to call anything much closer than exactly. Converting his 759 centimeters over to feet, it becomes exactly 24.9015 British feet. 24,901. 24,901.5 statute miles is the equatorial circumference of the earth as we know it today. Why does Temple One show us the distance around the world? Around the world. There are several dozen ways of pulling Temple One's coordinates from the matrix, but I'll cut through all that and get right down to the heart of it. Temple One's longitude is 120 degrees, 45 minutes, 22.9183 seconds west of Giza, 
and to the east of Giza, the long way around the world across Asia and the Pacifics, it is 239 degrees, 14 minutes, 36.98 seconds. Notice that its actual longitude in either direction presents exactly the same grid longitude. Temple of the Giant Jaguar? Sorry. Temple 1 is the peripheral pyramid, and that's why it faces to the west. As the peripheral pyramid, it addresses the global matrix in both directions, east and west. It therefore looks around the world, like the Earth's equatorial circumference. The exact numbers of which were left for us in the depth of its lofty temple since 24,901.5 statute miles is made up of 5,280 foot miles, Tikal shows us still another clear reference to our modern 12-inch foot. Moving over to the west of Temple 1, we have Temple 4, by now quite familiar, via its grid latitude, nine terraces, area formula, which shows us it's 33,486 square feet area. The height of its individual terraces is 15 and one half feet. Might that be 15.4919 feet, the same figure used in the layout of Teotihuacan? Feet. And then we have its slope angle. As near as we're able to determine this angle it comes back as 72.6 degrees. 72.66 is the square root of 5,280. References to our modern 12-inch foot and 5,280 foot mile are all over Tikal, but there is also something else common to its pyramids which, in my view, infers Tikal's ancient usage as a university where the matrix was taught. Going back a bit in this presentation, recall the actual West Giza longitude of Temple 4. The final element, seconds of longitude, was the exact radius of Stonehenge, 48.669344411 feet. This particular delivery was common, and indeed still is common, to all of Tikal's pyramids. The final element of their actual longitudes are recognizable mathematical constants. Temple 4 shows us the radius of Stonehenge. We saw this just moments ago. The two-faced longitudes of Temple 1, the peripheral pyramid. Notice that the final element of its West Giza longitude is 22.918311 seconds. 22.918311 is also exactly two-fifths of the 57.2957 radian constants in the tailings of Tikal's pyramids. And the longitude of its temple number three, 34.377467 is exactly three-fifths of the radian. This particular value, three-fifths of the radian, locates other monuments in the matrix, such as Florida's Mound Key, and where it is in the matrix vector. Not on the island, but on the big mound which survives there. And mounds and pyramids are not all that it finds. It likewise vectors on this. Florida's warm mineral springs, the waters of which are reputed to have certain beneficial, even healing properties. Why does this figure for three-fifths of the radian, shown to us so clearly by Tikal's 178-foot-high Temple Three, 
vector itself on warm mineral springs. There's no mounds or pyramids there, just water. Is this perhaps the fabled Fountain of Youth, once sought by Ponce de Leon?